Good morning, everybody. God bless you. It is Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, and I am ready to get her done. God bless you, Father, in Jesus' name. We worship you, Lord. We bless your holy name. We thank you for the word of God, the written word of God, a lamp and a light to our feet and pathway. We bless you, Lord. We thank you for the presence of the great and mighty one whom you have sent to be our teacher and guide, the same spirit of the living God that you breathed into Adam in the beginning, the same spirit of the living God that descended in a bodily form on the Messiah in the River Jordan, the same spirit of the living God who hovered over the Virgin Mary, the same spirit of God who is in us, with us, and for us, and on our side, our teacher, our advocate, intercessor, strengthener, and stand by this very hour. We bless you. We worship you. We rely upon you completely, our dear Heavenly Father, our our lovely, gentle, loving Heavenly Father. I thank you that your eyes never see us with disgust, that you never see us, Lord, as less. Lord, you see us through Christ and in Christ and with Christ, our Savior. We bless you. We thank you for your grace. We lay hold on the grace of God today with the faith that you have so generously poured out into us and upon us. In Jesus' name, we intend to walk in it today. In Jesus' name, I ask, Father, from the bottom of my heart that you would help us, lead us, guide us during this time together. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name today that we may please you in the things that we say and do. In Jesus' name, we worship you, Lord. Come on, let's just worship him some. Good morning, everybody that has joined me here. God bless you. Lord, we worship you. We bless you. We bless you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. So good, so kind, so good, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We thank you for your presence, Lord, in this broadcast. We worship you. Everybody, come on now. I can't worship God for you. You gotta, you gotta. Sooner or later, you gotta lift your hands, open, open your mouth, worship the Lord. He's worthy of our praise. When we gather together on that beautiful shore, <laughs> you know, day's coming soon, man. There's not gonna be anybody hiding over in the corner, you know, you know, looking at TikTok, you know. <laughs> Everybody's gonna be worshiping God together because when you see Him, well, you know, <laughs> you. May God open our eyes this very day in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Well, good morning, everybody. God bless you. It is a beautiful Sunday morning here in October. Still kind of feels like summer, but a nice crisp fall morning here in Colorado. Thank you so much for joining me, and God bless every single one of you in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I'd like to share a little bit of uh, church business with you here, if I could, show you what's going on here. We're doing quite well. Our building seed continues to grow, continues to grow uh, uh, quite well. And right now, we are at $66,011.30. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, y'all. You guys are doing good, and God's with you, God's in you, God's for you. And we will have our building in 2021 in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. May I please have another sip of this here energy drink? All right, God bless you. You can go ahead. You probably got some coffee or something there. You can have a sip too, okay? All right. Mm Mm-hmm. That's refreshing. That's good. 10 calories in a whole can. All right, all right, here we go. Uh, The building seat is at $66,011 and 40 cents, uh, 30 cents, excuse me, 66011.30. That's a, that's a whoop of money. (laughs) That's a pretty good pile of money there, y'all. Doing good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now I'm going to be talking about finances today. Um, I've been really pondering these things a lot lately, and that's kind of how God deals with me. I just start pondering things in my daily life. You know, God walks around with you all the time, and he's talking to you, whether you, you know, you don't hear a voice like you'd hear a bird singing in the front yard. Well, it must be God. No, no, God deals with us on a spiritual level. Now, sometimes spiritual things are a little bit uh, unusual for us to describe, but it's a lot of times you just know things. You just have a knowing. I need to do this. Or sometimes it's just a thought that comes to you. 
and it keeps coming over and over again. I was talking to Cindy here yesterday about some things that, you know, you deal with. Everybody, we all deal with some stuff. And all of a sudden, she remembered something that she said. I don't know, Cindy, was that 10 years ago? Was it longer than that? It might have been 20 years ago. All of a sudden, some words that she said popped into her into her mind. It floated up from her spirit. That's the Holy Ghost from the inside of us, uh, 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 really just communing with us and sharing with us. Aren't you glad that he does these things? God is so good. He's so gentle. He's so kind. And I just, he's, he's so good the way that he deals with us. Aren't you glad that God doesn't just take a ball bat and just, you know, cold cock us upside the head with and say, well, I told you people to straighten out here, you know. What are you guys doing over there? Smarten up here now. Now, that may be the way we talk sometimes to one another, to the kids or some, our employees or our boss or our what have you. <laughs> Careful there. Easy now. But God deals with us oh so gently. Oh so gently. But but very succinct, very clear. It, it's, it's, it's a little bit odd for us to try to describe it with English words. It's a lot easier to describe in tongues. But, uh, you know, we want to <laughs> want to speak English here as much as possible, you know, during our one hour we have together. But, you know, sometimes you just know something. God deals with you about something. And he that's the way he does with me. And he'll deal with me uh, about something, um, f- you know, days on end. I said days on end. And uh, sometimes it's sparked by something that somebody says. And then God kind of asks me, well, what do you think about that? You know, and here's what I think about it. Let's talk about it. Let's share. And, you know, sometimes... Uh, you know, you just commune with the Lord in your heart, and you need to learn to commune with, with God in your heart. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Jesus is Lord. He's so good. Uh, because a lot of times, there's things that we're thinking, and you can tell if it's depressing or defeated. That's not God. God's not making you depressed. God's not telling you you're no good. God's not telling you you'll never make it. God's not trying to talk you into some kind of a hairbrain business deal. That's lust, <laughs> okay? you got to have that brand new shiny object and you're willing to mortgage your, your soul for it, you know? That, that's not God urging you to do that. That's your, that's your flesh or your, or your lust or your carnality, you know, that's urging you to do these things. Praise the Lord. But God will deal with you. When God speaks to you, it's the wisdom of God. And, you know, I, I have just found... That for me anyway, that, that it's not a long rambling conversation with a bunch of meaningless fluff. I mean, that's the way a lot of us talk when we're having a conversation. We want to be heard. We want to kind of, you know, kind of share everything that we think, all, every thought that floats through our fertile mind. We want to get it out under the airwaves as quickly as possible when we're having a conversation. But, but for me anyway, that's not really how God speaks to me. God will speak a word or two to me over several days, over several days. And sometimes God deals with me about my pride. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm just going to give you a little uh, example here. We read in, in our daily Bible readings last week uh, in uh, First and Second Timothy about you know how Paul cautioned Timothy as a minister of the gospel to stay out of stupid arguments. <laughs> right? You remember that. You're with us, weren't you? Okay. You remember that. I'm sure you do. Praise the Lord. But, uh, and, and you know, we need this kind of advice because we have a propensity, some of us more than others, to get into dumb arguments that lead to nowhere, but but to, uh, uh, you know, a defeated feeling. I mean, I don't know about you, but if I get in a senseless argument where I try to prove my point, and really try to hammer home my point, I always end up feeling bad about it later. Now, when I'm preaching and teaching, that's different. But if I meet somebody out there in the business world, or I see somebody in traffic or something like that, or I see somebody out in front of my house or something, touching one of my trailers or something like that, you know, that, that, that's different. But we need to be cautious, right, about staying out of dumb arguments. And I got into, you know, I said something I shouldn't have said a few days ago, and I felt bad about it. I felt bad about it, and the Lord was talking to me about it. The Lord was talking to me about it, and you know what he said? Stay out of dumb arguments. (laughs) It wasn't a long, rambling correction. Now, are you listening to me? Now, sit down there. Straighten up. Now, I got something I want to tell you. Now, that happened here the other day, and all he had to say was, stay out of dumb arguments. 
And I knew exactly what he was talking about. And oh, I felt so bad about it, you know, and I had to repent. I'm sorry, Lord, that was wrong. Is there any way I can make that up? Is there any way I can, any way I can kind of make that better? You know, I mean, maybe I should go back and, you know, talk to this person. Maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. Whatever you say, Lord, that's what I'll do. But God deals with us all the time about things. And, uh, you know, during, we're talking about the offering right now. God deals with us about finances. Jesus talked about finances an awful lot. If you just read the Bible, may I please have another sip of this here, CoQ10 enzyme, whatever it is, electrolytes, whatever we got in here. Because finances are important. A lot of times in the religious mind, we think, oh, no. I don't think God, I had a guy tell me this in the parking lot of the church one time, you know, <laughs> I've had some home dingers in the parking lots of different churches from time to time. I had a guy in the parking lot of the church one time telling me, cause I brought up the subject of money. I don't know. It's something I like, I, I like to talk about. I mean, you know, I don't know what's wrong with talking about money. You working for it 40, 50, 60 hours a week. I don't know why we can't talk about it in church. So we were talking about it in the parking lot of the church, and this guy, who obviously knows nothing about the Bible, has never read the Bible, and worse yet, he's been indoctrinated with a religious mindset that is anti-Christian. Isn't it amazing that a lot of Christians are kind of (laughs) anti-Christ? Whoops, careful there. (laughs) Be careful there. All right. Um, It is, uh, let's see what flavor is that. That is a, uh, yeah, that is a razzleberry there, TJ. You're so smart. Look at that. Or or the camera's real good, or or both. (laughs) Your eyesight's pretty sharp, yeah. That's a rain, that's a, whatever that is. That's good, I like that. What does that say? Zero calories, look at that. Or zero sugar, whatever. But uh, this guy says, I just don't think God's very interested in all this stuff down here. And you know, a lot of times when I get in these conversations or arguments or stuff like that, and this wasn't an argument, it was just kind of a little bit of back and forth, and I had common sense enough this time to kind of cut it short, you know. I thought to myself after I walked away, I pondered what that guy said. And that's the way it is a lot of times with me. Somebody will say something and God will say, well, what do you think about that? Or God will start talking to me about it. So this guy says, you know, I just don't think God's very interested in all this stuff down here. Trying to sound real holy, you know. And I thought to myself over the next few days, you know, well, if God's not interested in all this stuff down here, why do you make it? <laughs> think about think about it for just a minute here. Have you ever made anything? You know, I, I've fixed a few things. I'm not sure I've really ever made much. You know, but I mean, I've fixed somebody's yard or fixed a lawnmower or fixed a truck. And you know, when you're out there busting your knuckles under the hood of a '78 Chevy, night after night, <laughs> day after day. Week after week, and you finally turn the key, and that thing grumbles to life, and it sounds good. You know, I can't tell you. I don't. Maybe you. Maybe you've never done anything like that. But I got to tell you, there is a sense of satisfaction. You're like, I did that. <laughs> yeah, I fixed that thing. They said it couldn't be done. <laughs> but that old thing's running again. Praise God from whom all blessings flow, and you just feel good about it. Can you imagine that God would? ponder throughout the ages of eternity past. Good morning, everybody. I love you guys so much. Can you imagine? Think, Just think of just common sense with me here for just a minute here. That God in eternity past pondered for eons before he spoke light be. I mean, he, that wasn't just the first thing he ever said. That's just the first thing that, that uh, that's how this universe came into being. I mean, I'm sure the Father and the Son had sweet fellowship throughout the ages of eternity past, right? Willy Wonka had Razzleberry. <laughs> Praise God. And uh, can you imagine that he pondered this universe? He pondered your soul, what you're going to be like. God pondered your personality, for eons before he created you in his image. You know, I don't, it's kind of odd, you know, it's kind of odd to say this, but I think God was kind of lonely because he can't fellowship with angels. They're not in his class. 
The Bible says that they're, they're servants. They're not in the God class. They're not in God's family. God wanted somebody like him, just like him, to fellowship with. And the Bible says, let us make man. God pondered these words. I'm sure if, if we couldn't measure it in years because years didn't start till the, till the earth started spinning, I guess. But how long did God ponder these words before he released them full of faith and created his partner, his family, his friend, his son in Adam? He pondered, there's no telling how long. Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over all the earth, over everything that creeps and swims and flies and over all the earth. And then to turn around and say, well, God's just not really interested in anything down here. I mean, that is just, I can think of some PG-13 terminology that would describe that pretty well, but let's just call that dumb. Okay, that's just dumb. And I think a lot of times people make excuses for why they're broke. We're going to cut to the chase here. We only got a short amount of time. People make excuses for why they're broke. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Don't make excuses. Listen, if you're broke. So you know what, Lord? I mean, this is where we are. <laughs> this is the starting point. This is not the end. This is only the starting point. I'm not going to stay here. I am not going to stay here. By your grace and by your mercy, by your blessing, I'm coming out of this broke situation. If the Bible's true, I'm coming out of this. All right. So I better get to my main message here. Praise the Lord. Is let me put a couple of questions up here if I could please. Thank you, Lord. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. Worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I worship you, Jesus. Is the blessing included? Is material wealth included in the blessing? Say that with me. Is material wealth included in the blessing? Let's just find out what the Bible says. Would that be all right? Would that offend anybody's delicate sensibilities if we just found out what the Bible said? Not what religious people say. But is material wealth included in the blessing in the pages of the Bible? Let's just start here. I'm going to read uh, uh, some scripture here. You might want to make note of these. If you'd like to, I will send you these, these scripture references because I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. You're going to have to listen carefully uh, or maybe take some notes. But I'm going to start. All I did was uh, uh, use Blue Letter Bible, and I just uh, searched for the word bless, blessing, and blessed. And I just started with the book of Genesis. If I read them all, we'd be here for a long, long time. But I'm just going to hit some highlights here. Uh, Genesis 12.2 is material wealth included thank you for putting that up there michelle that's very helpful on youtube you can see that is material wealth included in the blessing i'm going to say it again is material wealth ask your faith buddy is material wealth included in the blessing because sometimes uh, religious people want to define the blessing as only a narrow very narrow little definition it doesn't include anything material brian stop that it's only the warm, fuzzy feelings you get every now and then in church. Easter, maybe Christmas, maybe on your wedding day, you know, what have you. But not the, the material stuff is not a blessing. Stop it, preacher. Stop that. All right, let's find out what the Bible says. Genesis 12, 2, I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great and you will be a blessing. Here, God defines the blessing as prestige. I'm going to make your name great. Is there any other way to, defi to, uh, to explain this? If God makes your name great, then everybody knows your name. I mean, I could go down the list of these one-namers, you know, LeBron, Barack. Oprah, 
(laughs) They go by one name and everybody knows them. Why? Because God made their name great. Jesus, right? King David, Adam. God made their name great. Abraham. They're one namers. You say, you don't even have to say their middle or their last name or nothing. People know who they are because they're one namers because God made their name great. It's prestige. Brother, if you were in the presence of any of these people that I just named, you'd smarten up a little bit, I'm sure. Even I would. (laughs) I'd probably tuck some of my hair up under my baseball cap and say, hi, my name's Brian Lee. How are you? (laughs) Instead of, how's it going up in there? No, you'd, you'd smarten up a little bit. If you're in the presence of one of these prestigious individuals, why? Because God made their name great. That's the blessing. That's the Bible definition of the blessing is prestige. Somebody write that down. One of the Bible, and there's many. It's not just one little narrow definition. I know somebody who says one of these days, my name is going to be on a skyscraper in downtown Denver. That's prestige. If your name is on a skyscraper in downtown Denver, and you can see it from I-25, that's prestige. That's the blessing according to the written word of God, not according to some misguided, poverty-stricken missionary that doesn't have any solid Bible teaching but a lot of religion. Genesis twenty-two seventeen. I better hustle because I got pages. <laughs> I tried to keep my notes down to one page. That worked for a week or two. Genesis twenty two seventeen. 17. That in blessing, this is when Abram offered his only begotten son Isaac on the mountains of Moriah for a burnt sacrifice. And just before he plunged that knife into the boy's throat, I guess, the angel of the Lord, and it was the messenger of the covenant. It was Jesus himself, I believe. He says, now I know (laughs) that you're my covenant man. And from this day, he says that in blessing, Genesis 22, 17, that in blessing, I will bless thee. Is he talking about the blessing? Is he talking about the blessing? Is it just warm, fuzzy feelings you get in church every now and then? Is that what he's talking about? Now, listen, don't get me wrong. Knowing Christ is the ultimate blessing. But God never tells you to choose between I mean, that overall feeling of well-being and security, that knowing that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life and knowing that you're going to heaven and knowing that you're not going to hell. Trust me, dear darling brother and sister, I have drunk deep from the cool, clear, refreshing waters of salvation and knowing that I'm not going to hell because most of my life up until, I mean, my whole life up until July 13th, 1988, I knew I was going to hell. I went to bed weeping and shaking and begging God not to let me die and go to hell as a teenage boy. I had this awful feeling of dread gnawing at my insides day and night for years. I don't mind telling you religious people put me in that situation too, but nevertheless, when God saved my soul, brother, that's the ultimate blessing. Don't get me wrong. Knowing Christ and being saved There's no greater blessing. But God doesn't make you choose between that and having your rent paid. God gives you the whole thing. Every material blessing is included. Well, I feel like preaching a little bit. This room's not big enough to hold me, is it? (laughs) Need better sound deadening in here. Got to get me some more of them panels on the wall. God doesn't make you choose between eternal life and health. He gives you both. Brother, that's the gospel. Read read the Bible. <laughs> if you can read the Bible and find anywhere where God makes you choose between eternal life and healing, I mean, you should be in here doing the podcast next Sunday because I've, I've been looking for that for a long time. It's not in there, brother. I read the Bible a little bit. Genesis twenty two seventeen. 17. In blessing, I'm going to bless you, and in multiplying, I'm going to multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. And the sand which is upon the seashore, and your seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Now, what's that mean? And we unravel that Elizabethan English. He says, Your offspring for unlimited generations are going to dominate planet Earth. Brother, that's prosperity. That's the blessing. 
your kin folks, your children, your your uh, uh, great grandchildren, your great 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 grandchildren, people when they walk down the streets of gold throughout the ages of eternity. The angels, I mean, are going to bow their head and say, here comes one of the God's kids, man. <laughs> Give them, make way. Here comes one of God's children. Your seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Brother, in the olden days when this was written in Genesis 22, if you possess the gate of the city, you controlled that entire city. You could uh, lay siege to that city and starve them out. You could control their politics, their economics, their philosophy, their water supply, everything if you controlled the gate. Jesus said the gates of hell should not prevail against the church. You and I, Jesus, gave us the keys of the kingdom. Brother, that's the blessing. We cannot be stopped. You can't even slow us down. We're gaining speed. We're gaining momentum. We're gaining strength every day. Boy, I'm blowing out my own earphones here. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth. Goodwill toward men. Genesis 28.4. I believe this is... Um, uh, I don't have this right in front of me, but this is either Isaac or Jacob that's receiving the, hand, the, uh, the, the blessing from Abraham. Because God told Abraham, your seed. That means your descendants. Well, Isaac was his son. And then Jacob was Isaac's son. And then Joseph was Jacob's son. And Manasseh was uh, was Joseph's son. Can anybody name Manasseh's firstborn? I can't. <laughs> but that blessing is inherited. That doesn't mean it wears off. It gets stronger. The next generation always possesses more than the, than the previous. They're supposed to. Because they not only had the wisdom, but they already had the material wealth, the land, the influence, the water rights, everything else that goes with it. They're supposed to expand. They're supposed to do better than the previous generation. He says, I'm in Genesis 28, 4, I'm going to give you the blessing of Abraham to you and to your seed with you, that you may inherit the land. Hold on just a minute here. You're going to inherit land? That's the blessing? That's what it says. It says the blessing of Abraham. Yeah, pastor, but that's just the blessing of Abraham. You don't seem to understand. We're in the New Testament. Is, is Galatians in the New Testament? Anybody out there? Yeah, you in the front row here. You got your Bible? Open your Bible there. Yeah, you wake up. Get off of TikTok. Is Galatians in the New Testament? Are you sure? Here, here's a Bible. Here, look it up. Is Galatians in the New Testament? Christ hath redeemed us. Chapter 3. From the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Why did he do that? So that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the, of the Spirit by faith. The blessing of Abraham's mind? All the way from Genesis chapter 22, 20, uh, 28, chapter 12. The whole blessing of Abraham's mind? You betcha, buddy. Ma Ma Maker <laughs> is Manasseh's firstborn. We got some scriptorians here. We got some Bibleologists here. <laughs> what did I promise you? <laughs> I didn't promise you anything, did I? If you come up with that, good job there, Michelle. I'm going to give you the blessing of Abraham to you and to your kids, and you're going to inherit the land. B brother, the blessing of God includes land. It's right here. I don't know what you're supposed to do with that. Might as well believe it. What do you? What else you got to do? Might as well believe God for some land. How much you want? I mean, there's a lot out there. There's like 50 million acres in the United States alone and something like that. Look it up. Read a book. <laughs> or Google it or whatever you got to do. Careful with that Google. They will lie to you, brother. They will lie. More, more energy drink. I need more energy here. Hang on. The blessing includes land. Listen to me. This is serious business. And it doesn't say you buy it or work for it. It says it, you inherit it. How do you, how do you qualify for an inheritance? By working real hard? Showing up in church every Sunday? Promising God you'll do better every single time? No. All you got to do is be born in the right family. Well, you was born again with the name of Jesus. You're in the right bunch now. Glory to God in the highest. We better keep moving here before somebody starts preaching the whole day away here. Genesis 39, 
39.5. This is when Joseph was sold into Egypt as a slave into the house of Potiphar. And it came to pass, Genesis 39.5, uh, from that time that he had made him overseer of the house, Potiphar made Joseph, uh, you know, his, his, uh, his butler, I don't know what you call it, his overseer, his groundskeeper over the whole shooting match, right? Chief of staff. Overseer over all the house and over all that he had. Potiphar said, "Whatever, just whatever, Joseph. You want to buy a bunch of sheep? You want to sell a bunch of cows? You want to plant a bunch of grain? What, whatever. You want to build another another bunkhouse for the for the workers? Whatever you got to do, man. Just do it. Just I got to do what I got to do. You do. You just ha- handle everything. So he made him overseer over all that all that he had." that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. That means that everything that Joseph touched turned out right. Every decision he made in the household. Wouldn't you like to have that? Every household decision you make should be blessed. Why don't you just wait on God? You, you, Brother Hagin used to say, if you'll just learn to listen to the Spirit of God, if we will just learn to listen to the Spirit of God, you'd almost never make a mistake. That's the blessing. Every decision you make in the business world, every decision you make in your household, or the arrangements, whatever you got to do, whether you got to do a renovation, sell the house, buy the house, buy a car, sell a car, paint something, I don't know, build something, whatever you got to do, I mean, you, you'll you almost never make a mistake because of the blessing, blessing that is on you if you'll just simply wait on God until you have that, until God, let him, let him show you what he wants. I heard Gloria Copeland say one time, God, if you'll just make it clear, I'll do whatever you're telling me to do. Brother, if you pray like that and live like that, you'll almost never make a mistake. And even when you do, God will help you. You'll get through it. I said, you'll get through it just fine. Praise the Lord. The blessing of the Lord was on Potiphar's house. I've had this happen to me. I used to work for a company. Don't want to name them. Don't want to embarrass anybody. When I went to work there many, many years ago, I was a truck driver, you know, and, and their trucks were were dog food, man. <laughs> Awful. I mean, I could, I'm driving down, coming down Highway 93, man, coming down out of Golden into Boulder, man, just hanging on for dear life. I saw a guy at the, at the gas station one time. He said, I saw you coming down off of that mountain. Boy, your eyes were big as dinner plates hanging onto that steering wheel. You better believe it, man. <laughs> you know? <laughs> God. And you can look at the floor. There's a hole in the floor in this, in this truck, big truck. And you can see the highway going by and the floorboards. <laughs> well, I said, you know what, Lord, I don't know if anybody else in this company is serving you, but I'm going to serve you. And I started tithing. I could barely, I mean, keep body and soul together. I was struggling with all my bills. I was struggling, brother. I don't have time to tell you how I was struggling. But I started tithing off of the money that that company paid me. And by the time I left that company, they had a fleet of brand new trucks, a whole new manufacturing system, uh, management practices in place, bookkeeping in place, everything. And they're making millions today. The blessing of the Lord is even going to be on your workplace if you'll let it. Why not? Why not bless those clowns down there? <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus, I worship you. How about Leviticus 25, 21? We're talking about the blessing. Does the blessing include material wealth? Then I will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year. Boy, you better read the Bible. It's a good book. Leviticus 25, 21. I'm going to command the, uh, Yahweh speaking to his people. I will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year, and it shall bring forth fruit for three years. You're going to harvest in one year three years' wages. <laughs> How do you like that? Could anybody dig that, man? Can you be digging that? Yeah, bro, that's cool. What if you worked one year and took about three years off? <laughs> That's a blessing. What's wrong with that? Nothing. You need to catch up on some fishing and camping and lounging around. Amen. That's what I mean. That's what ultra rich people do. I mean, they can lay in bed and pray in tongues for three days, and it don't make no never mind. <laughs> That's the blessing. It's in the book. We're just reading the book. 
I mean, I printed this off right, you know. Amen. I printed, I print these off to make it easier to, you know, get her done. Uh, how about this one? Uh, Deuteronomy 12, 15. Well, Brian, that sounds like the Old Testament. I've already let you off the hook on this Old Testament, New Testament stuff. The Bible says that Jesus blessed them when he lifted up his hands. Last couple of verses of the book of Luke. Lifted up his hands and blessed them. You think that's a different blessing? <laughs> it's the same be fruitful and multiply blessing, brother. Every time God blesses you, you become fruitful and multiply. Yeah, but that was just with evangelism. Brother, you're not reading the book. The Apostle Paul traveled the known world. Can you travel the known world if you're not blessed? Huh? I can't hear you. What would you say? Okay. So material wealth just might be included in the blessing you're saying over here. Yeah? Okay. Somebody's listening. Notwithstanding, you're going to kill and eat flesh in all your gates, every part of town. I mean, in the city, in the field, you're going to have plenty to eat. Is that the blessing? Well, we're going to find out. Whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. <laughs> I mean, if you like peanut butter and jelly. I mean, if you like smoked turkey bacon sandwich ice cream flavors. I mean, I don't know. Whatever your heart desires. I heard a country song the other day, whipped cream on tacos. I don't know about that. <laughs> okay, keep preaching here. Keep teaching. Stop preaching. Start teaching. He says, whatever you, whatever you desire, is that the blessing? The Bible says the desire of the righteous is only good. It's in the book of Proverbs. I think that might be chapter 10 or chapter 11. It's right in there. I don't got time to stop and look it up. The desire of the righteous shall be granted. And in the next chapter, he says, the desire of the righteous is only good. Oh, Brian, I only desire, you know, a, a pound of, of fentanyl. Well, then that's not a righteous desire. That's stupid. Righteous people desire to have their bills paid, their kids taken care of, their retirement taken care of. This is common sense stuff. Their house paid for. A nice car to ride around in. So you're not worrying about whether it's going to overheat. You know, does the air conditioning work when it's 106? Are the tires wore out? Righteous people just want that kind of stuff taken care of. They want to have plenty to give so they can bless their family. Bless their family. Bless, bless their family. With what? With good stuff. Where'd you get that notion? From the Father God. He wants to bless his kids with, and his family with good stuff. So do you. Proverbs 10, 24. Thank you for looking that up for me. I appreciate it. He says you're going to have whatever your, your soul desires according to the blessing, Deuteronomy 12, 15. According to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he has given you, he says you can eat the clean with the unclean. <laughs> In Deuteronomy, he said it. He said that's the blessing. Deuteronomy 16, 17. Look at this. Deuteronomy 16, 17 trying to give you enough time to turn to these if you'd like to. Every man shall give as he is able. All right? That would seem to indicate a percentage. If if you only made $100 last year, you can still give 10%. If you made $100 million last year, you can still give 10%. Should be that way with taxes too, shouldn't it? I think about 5% would be a good number, don't you? Everybody, If everybody paid 5% or you can't vote, <laughs> you're not a, right? <laughs> oh, I love you, Jesus. All right, well, stay out of there. Stay out of the ditch here, Pastor. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord. He's talking about receiving offerings in Deuteronomy 16, 17. He says, you're going to give according to how the Lord has blessed you. So apparently, when you have stuff to give, it's because God blessed you. Is material wealth included in the blessing? According to Deuteronomy, I got a lot of these guys. I've only hit about six here so far. I've got pages of these. I could go on all day long, but I'm going to let you go here in just a little bit. Hang on tight. Deuteronomy uh, 28.8. Are you hearing this? Deuteronomy 28, 8. The Lord shall command the blessing, not suggest, <laughs> not wish. 
<laughs> the Lord's going to command a blessing on your storehouses. What in the world is that talking about? That's talking about your bank account in today's uh, uh, economy. You don't store up all your dried fruits and your, your grains and stuff like that in the backyard in some storehouse or barn. Most of us don't. Some some still do, I guess. But you take your paycheck and you put a, you know, you put a certain amount of that in the bank. He's going to command the blessing on your bank accounts. Why don't you believe this? Is material wealth included in the blessing? Apparently, according to Deuteronomy 28, 8. Huh. Well, let's keep going here and see what we can discover. He says in chapter uh, 30, verse 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Deuteronomy 30, 19. Then I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life and blessing, that you and your seed may live. He said the choice is yours. So when religiously minded people say, well, I just don't believe God is interested in all this stuff down here. I just don't believe material wealth is included in the blessing. Well, you just done made your choice then. You're not going to receive none because you just said you don't believe it. I do believe it. So I get it. Have a nice day. Pretty simple stuff. It's got to be simple, you know, for me to get it. I mean, if I could get it, then anybody could get it. Is material wealth included in the blessing? According to Deuteronomy chapter 30, you have a choice whether or not you're blessed or not. It's totally your choice. And here's the thing. The devil will use Christian people. It's strange. It's bizarre. That the worst opponents that I've ever seen to prosperity are Christian people. And they'll fight you. I mean, just in your face in the lobby of the church, in the parking lot of the church. It's so weird. Let me show you something here. I've got a definition for you here. You might want to take a note of this. Okay. Okay, I've I got my ducks in a row here. I'm going to show you this so as you can read it here, all right? Look at this. This is my definition of prosperity. And I want you to take this definition and compare it to the world's concept of prosperity, to the Bible concept of prosperity, and to the common sense definition of prosperity. This is the this is the Bryonic definition, okay? This is the BLT. To prosper is to excel or succeed in any and every godly or worthwhile enterprise or endeavor. To excel or succeed in any and every godly or worthwhile enterprise or endeavor. When you go get a job, you should be hitting a home run. They should be calling you a rock star at work. Serious. Serious. I mean, they're going to tell you, you know, this company's just not big enough for you. You're, you're so good at what you do. Right? We're going to have to just expand the, the, the map here and give you your own territory. Because everything you touch turns to gold. No, that was good, Michelle. Uh, are you just editing? That's fine. Put that up there. That'd be great. Everything you set your hand to, whether you're building, I mean, a, a, a deck in your backyard, right? Whether you're trying to learn a new language, whether you're learning, trying to learn karate, I don't care what it is. If you're trying to learn how to balance your checkbook, that is a godly or worthwhile enterprise or endeavor. Sure it is. If you're trying to get on an exercise program, that is a godly or a worthwhile enterprise or endeavor. If you're trying to clean your house, hello, glory. If you're trying to clean up your backyard, I know some people that's backyard is, is a disaster. <laughs> and if they go out there and they start working on it, may God prosper them. Wouldn't you, if you had a neighbor right? And you know, you keep your yard tidy and their yard is a mess. And then you see them out there one day, first time you've ever seen them out there. And all of a sudden they're out there trying to clean up that backyard. Would you want them to succeed or excel in that endeavor or not? Of course you would. You want them to, 
You might even holler over the fence, hey, <laughs> prosper ye. <laughs> Cause you want them to, to do a real you want them to do well. You don't want there to be any impediments to their success. Would you? Not if you got any if you, if you got a lick of common sense, you wouldn't want there to be any impediments to their success. You would want them to succeed or to prosper in any godly or worthwhile enterprise or endeavor. If you're trying to remodel your house, if you're trying to clean up your garage, you want to succeed or excel in that. You don't want to go out there for five minutes and give up. That's not that You're not prospering in that endeavor. All right. I'm going to give you something else here. So hang on tight, fasten your safety belt. I'm going to give you something else here. Do you want to prosper? I said, do you want to prosper? I can't hear you. You in the back. Can you hear me in the back over here? Do you want to prosper? Tell your faith, buddy. I don't know about you, bro. I'm, I'm tired of getting whipped at the game of life. I'm tired of being, you know, coming out on the muddy end of the stick all the time. Aren't you? I mean, I listen, I, I know what I'm talking about. I've been beat up in life. I'm done with it. I've, I've had a belly full of that. I'm going to prosper. I said, I'm going to prosper. I have tons of scripture on it. I don't care what any religious-minded person says. I don't care what any anti-Christian says. I'm going to prosper. I've got scripture on it. Thank you, TJ. Joshua 1.8, this book of the law, the word of God in the modern language, shall not depart out of thy mouth. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, I'm going to try to slow down here in the last few minutes here. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That means think about it, talk about it, commune with God about it, ponder it, mull it over. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Prosperity requires, this is, this, this is just something I, this isn't Bible, this is just some common sense bullet points that I put up on my screen. You might be thinking, well, I, I can think of seven or eight more things. That's fine. Let's go with three for right now, okay? Prosperity, do you want to prosper? And I got some people here saying, yes, they do. And I know you do. It's probably burning on the inside of you like it was me all these years and still does. I still want to prosper. Prosperity requires God's blessing. Real prosperity requires God's blessing. Jesus said, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul? Not much, <laughs> right? God, uh, prosperity requires God's blessing, my faith, and my action. Can you see that on the screen there on YouTube? Prosperity requires God's blessing, my faith, and my action. It's very, very simple. So you have to know that the blessing includes material wealth. Then you have something to believe. If you know that the Bible says that the blessing includes material wealth, now you have a firm foundation for your faith. Hebrews 11.1, 1, now faith is the substance. It's the building blocks. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Do you hope for prosperity? Can you see yourself prospering? Can you see yourself in liberty? I got some scriptures here on liberty. Not going to get to it. You ought to look it up. James wrote to the church and said, well, maybe I will look it up here. See what the Holy Ghost has to say. I'm not trying to run the show here. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Worship you, Jesus. Well, you know what's in there, just like I do, right? Glory to God in the highest. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There it is. I just stapled it to some other stuff here. 
Look at what James wrote to the church in chapter 1, verse 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be, this woman, this child shall be blessed in their deed. Do you want to be blessed? Well, yeah, but I just don't believe that the blessing includes material wealth. Then you haven't been listening and you're sure not reading the Bible because we have established through uh, tons of scripture, and I have a lot more, that the, the blessing includes material wealth. Now, what did James say? This is near the end of the New Testament for the ultra-dispensationalists. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty? What is the perfect law of liberty? Do you desire to be free? If you're in debt, you're, you're not experiencing, if you're in tons of credit card and mortgage debt and consumer debt and unsecured debt, then you're not living in the kind of liberty that God intended for us to. Yeah, but Brian, what about my public service bill? There's always going to be a little bit of debt hanging over us. Let's not split hairs here, okay? We're talking about suffering under an excessive load of consumer debt. There's bondage in that. Ask me how I know. I said there's bondage in that. And the opposite of bondage is freedom. And Jesus said in Luke chapter 4, <laughs> I think it's verse 11, you know it as well as I do, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. <laughs> if you're talking to a poor person, and what's the best news they could ever hear? You ain't got to be poor no more. The perfect law of liberty and continues therein, he being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in everything he touches. What is the perfect law of liberty? The perfect law of liberty is simply this. The law of faith in the blood of Jesus has made you free from the law of sin and death. You're no longer under any form of bondage, so stop believing it, stop talking it, and stop acting on it. Again, let's go back to what does a prosperity require. One more time. Prosperity requires God's blessing, my faith, and my action. You may not even feel like you're out, and you, if you look at your credit card statement, it sure may not feel like you're out of bondage yet. Start acting it. And I don't mean go charge up a bunch of stuff. Put on a happy face. Why don't you take that credit card statement and put your foot on it? I've done this many times. Take your bare foot <laughs> and step on it. And curse it in Jesus' name. Say, I'm blessed. You're cursed. Dry up in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Kurifel porosis to in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I worship you, Lord Jesus. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. Boy, I got a lot more here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Lord. Worship you. Prosperity requires God's blessing, my faith, and my action. It'd be one thing to believe it, but fail to act. There's a lot of people that claim to believe the Bible. Man, when, when the heat is on, when the pressure's on, do we act like it? Because that's what separates the boys from the men and, and, and the girls from the women. When the pressure's on, how do we act? If you can act on the written and the spoken word of God in the face of all evidence to the contrary, you will take all of God's blessings. I said all of them. Failure to act is the source of failure. 
especially for the believer that knows that the blessing includes material wealth. And God wants to not just bless your finances, but everything that touches your life. The perfect law of liberty will seek and destroy everything that is against the blessing. Now, I didn't take the time to read Deuteronomy chapter 28, but it is the catalog of blessing and curses. If you read Deuteronomy 28, he says, losing your kids, that's under the curse. Losing your mind, that's under the curse. Losing your money, losing your land, losing your assets, that's all under the curse. The blessing includes, I mean, peace and tranquility in your borders. Having a secure homeland. (laughs) Having a secure and loving family surrounding you. That's under the blessing. Well, I ain't got that. Says who? (laughs) Who says you don't have that? I'm looking at what I got. Stop looking at what you don't have and start thanking God for what he wants you to have. And that's how you receive it. Faith takes. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Praise the Lord. I worship you, Lord Jesus. I worship you, Lord. And notice that it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, that faith is the substance of things hoped for. Don't let the devil steal your hope. What is hope? Hope is an earnest expectation. It's an image The enemy wants to use your imagination to paint a picture of failure in your life. Listen, if you see yourself, and listen, it it can happen to any of us, and I'm sure it has, where all of a sudden, for no reason really, we start seeing ourselves, we start imagining something bad happening. When you start imagining something bad happening, stop immediately. Rebuke the devil. Say, oh, no, you don't, devil. You're not allowed to use my imagination. I'm a blood-bought child of the living God. I see myself in Christ. I see myself inheriting the blessing. I see myself inheriting land. I see myself opening envelopes with great, big, fat, surprise checks coming to me. In Jesus' name. In Je- I said great, big, fat, honking, honk, honk, surprise checks with my name on it. That's hope. I see my kids coming home and knocking on my door. (laughs) Throwing their loving arms around me. I see it. Brother, if 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 you say that in church, but the other 166 and a half hours of the week you see yourself losing... You're just being religious. We have to do something about the imagination. That's why I preach these things. That's why I go through these scriptures. That's why we engage in daily Bible readings so that the Holy Ghost has an opportunity to paint the proper picture on our image system, otherwise known as our imagination. Your imagination is God-given. I mean, sometimes when we say the word imagination, it has, okay, all right, we're getting spooky here. No, it's the way you're made. God imagined the universe before he spoke it. God imagined his family before he spoke them. And if you imagine the wrong thing and then speak it, guess what? You're created in the image of God. You create success or failure by imagining it, believing it, and then speaking it. I think a lot of times, you know, in the the word faith movement, you know, we've kind of forgot that you're really supposed to believe the things you're saying are coming to pass. We just kind of say it and kind of wish it would happen. That's not faith. It's okay to take some careful inventory of your faith and say, wait a minute, am I really believing this? What, what do I, when I turn off the lights, you know, at night, put my head on the pillow, what do I really believe? When I'm all by myself in the car, what do I believe? When I'm working around the house, what do I really believe? When I talk to myself, what am I saying about my situation and my future? Because that's what you're going to have. It's what you say when you don't think anybody's listening that really, really, really makes a difference. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Jesus. Well, guys, I've had a wonderful time. I love you with all of my heart. Father God, in Jesus' name, I bless your holy, righteous, precious people in the name of Jesus. If there's somebody listening to me today, and you know, you, you, you don't think you're right with God, why don't you just pray with me right now? I'm a pastor. I'm here to help you. I love you with all of my heart. More than anything, I want to... I want you to be saved. 
There is a heaven to gain. There is a hell to avoid, friends. It's real. Oh, so real. Won't you pray with me? Just pray this and say, Heavenly Father, come on, come right on into the throne room because the blood of Jesus has made a pathway for you. Yeah, for you. Your name's in the book. Come on in. Come on in. It's okay. Come on. God's not mad. Come on in. Come on in and just talk to the, to the Father God and say, Heavenly Father, I'm coming in Jesus' name. And Jesus is sitting right there at the throne, right there at the right hand of God saying, yeah, come on in. Come on in. You're my child now. Come on in. It's okay. Come on in. People get saved on their way to the throne. It happens every day. And just say, I come to you in Jesus' name. I know you're not mad at me. I know you won't throw me out. I know you receive me as your own precious child in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. No matter what I've done, come on in. Come on in. Time to come on home now today. Come on home. Come on home to Father's house today. The Father's waiting for you. He's been waiting a long time for you. Come on. Say, Jesus, be my Lord. Be my Savior. Wash away my sins by your blood. You know, a lot of times we think about our sins so much. God thinks about that blood much more. Come in. Come in. That blood's for you. It speaks louder than your sin. In fact, it dissolves all sin. If you believe it, if you believe it, come on. This is your day. This is your day. We all came this way. Now, I got a homework assignment for you. You go tell somebody that Jesus is Lord. If you're there in the home and you got your sweet buddies there with you, you got your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your aunt, your uncles, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whoever you got. Just look them right in the face and take their hand and say, Jesus is my Lord and I'm a Christian. I'm going to serve God all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. If you're there all by yourself, I want you to find somebody before the sun goes down. Come on now, be strong. Find somebody before the sun goes down today. And you go tell them. You take their hand and you say, I just want to tell you that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before the Father God and before the angels of God. That means he says, that one's mine. That one's mine. If you say, if you tell people here on earth, Jesus is mine. He'll tell the Father in heaven, that child is mine. Okay? All right. Well, I love you with all my heart. I hate to let you go. but It's time to let you go here. It's going to be a wonderful Sunday. God's with you. God's hand of blessing is upon your life. I'm going to go back one more time to to my uh, recipe. (laughs) <laughs> people say, that sounds like a formula. Well, you know, some of us need a roadmap. Let's see, where is it here? Got to get it up here. Prosperity requires, and remember the Bible definition, the BLT tra- uh, definition of prosperity is to excel or succeed in any and every worthwhile or godly enterprise or endeavor. If you're trying to learn how to pray or read your Bible every day, That is a worthwhile endeavor. That is a godly enterprise. I want you to join me 7 o'clock Mountain Time tomorrow morning, okay? And we're going to be reading the Bible through. We read the New Testament through in one year because there's 260 chapters in the New Testament. And there's 260 weekdays in a year. So join us right here on these platforms at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. And we'll read through the Bible. It takes 30 minutes. I try my very best to stop at 30 minutes, so you can get on with your day. So at 7 a.m., <clears throat> join me. I love you with all my heart, okay? All right, hate to let you go. It's so hard to let you go every day, but I'm gonna let you go. It's a beautiful Sunday. God loves you. God's with you. Somebody needs healing today. And I don't know if there's anybody there with you that it's appropriate for them to lay their hand on you. But if not, if there's nobody there, just lay hands on yourself, and I'm praying with you right now. 
as if I were laying hands on you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I'm praying for my friend, my partner, my viewer, my, my listener right now. With all of the faith that you've entrusted to this ministry, and I ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, for healing for this dear soul, for this body, for this mind. In the name of Jesus, forgive their sins, Lord, and heal all their diseases just like you promised you would. We believe that we receive it. We're taking it right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. All right, guys, thank you so much for your time, your attention today. It is a privilege and an honor to be with you. Remember, our building seed account right now is at 66000 You want to see that one more time? Want me to put that up there one more time before I let you go? All right, $66,011.30. That's pretty good. I said that's pretty good. So, again, if you'd like to participate in the offering, you can do that. the text to give. Text the word BOOST to 84576. Text the word BOOST to 84576. That's a good song there, TJ. I like that song. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Worship you, Lord. You can always, if you have any question about anything that I have said, I'm going to put this up, put this up here for a while, but I'm going to show you this. If you'd like to email me, obviously you can chat with us here online, but if you missed that or if you're watching this later, you can always email me, Brian, B-R-Y-A-N, at boostchurch.com. If you have any question about anything that I have said or how to direct your offerings, I'll be help you, happy to help you with that. Cindy and I participate in every offering that Boost Church has ever received, and so shall we always. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. So I invite you to partner with us in this godly enterprise and endeavor, which is to get our feet on our building this year in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And material wealth such as our own building is included in the blessing. I speak the blessing over Boost Church in the name of Jesus. I speak the blessing over God's people. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Perfect protection, perfect wisdom, perfect soundness, divine guidance and health in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. God's in you, God's with you, God's for you, God's on your side. No weapon formed against you can prosper. The devil is defeated and Jesus is Lord. Let's pray for America. Father, we pray for this country, God, that you would save us from the, from the satanic plot to destroy this country and to erode our freedoms. And may every enemy of the United States of America, may every enemy of our freedoms, may every enemy of the church, may every enemy of Israel, may every enemy of the unborn be brought out in broad daylight for punishment in Jesus' name, 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 in Jesus' name. Arise and shine, church, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. In Jesus' name, though gross darkness covers the land and the people, the glory of the Lord shall be seen on Boost Church. In Jesus' name. We declare the glory of God over the United States of America from border to border, from corner to corner, from Maine to Hawaii, from Alaska to Florida, from Minnesota to Texas, from Washington State to Washington, D.C., from the highest mountain to the lowest valley, in the cities, the farms, the fields, the country, the lakes, the rivers, the highways, the byways, the barrios, the skyscrapers, Lord, we declare the glory of God over every inch of the United States of America. May the United States of America ever serve King Jesus. That is our prayer, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. God, we covenant with you to walk with you. I know that you're speaking to your people. May we be filled with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and in spiritual understanding, we pray today. In the name of Jesus. All right, you guys, I love you with all my heart. I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for your attention today. It's so hard to leave. It really is. Can't wait till we're together. Call your boost group leader and say, hey, let's do this, man. All right. So until tomorrow morning, I love every single one of you. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. Until then, this is Brian reminding you to feed your faith, starve your doubts, and walk in love because Jesus is coming.